Welcome to Huts of New Zealand. In this series I will travel to backcountry huts all around New Zealand to record, review and rate my experiences to give you a better idea of what to expect when you go hiking around our beautiful country. Today I'm tramping to Mangamate Hut, a nine bunk standard hut within Furunaki Tapua Atane Conservation Park in the North Island of New Zealand. I visited this hut as part of a three night tramping trip after staying at Central Furunaki Hut and Upper Furunaki Hut, so check out those videos if you haven't already. From State Highway 38, turn south onto Minganui Road and continue for 10 minutes past Minganui Settlement turning right onto River Road. Veer left after the bridge and continue along the gravel road for another 10 minutes. The road was in poor condition when I drove it, with lots of big potholes, so take extra care. The large car park is sheltered under huge native giants of the forest, making for a perfect introduction to the ancient Furunaki Forest Park. There's a long drop toilet here, a couple of picnic tables and a shelter over the start of the track with loads of information on the tracks, native species and conservation efforts within the forest park. I always take a photo of the signs before heading off. Remember to lock your vehicle and don't leave any valuables behind. The track to Mangamate Hut is about 11 kilometers long with 350 meters of climb and takes the average person around 4 hours. I did the track in reverse as the final leg of my multi-day trip so the walk back was mostly downhill and took me just under 3 hours. From the car park the track starts off wide and well formed travelling through the incredible Podokarp forest full of native birds. Some of the trees such as Kahikatea, Matai, Rimu and Totra are a thousand years old and stand 60 meters tall. One kilometre in, you'll reach Te Whaiti Nui Atoi Canyon, a volcanic ignimbrite deposit carved out by the Furunaki River. Continuing along the track, you'll pass the junction for the Morangi mountain bike track, and at the four kilometre mark, you'll reach the Mangamate track. From here, the route becomes much more difficult, following the Mangamate stream upstream for a while, requiring countless river crossings and a keen eye for track markers. Some tramping experience will be required to follow on safely and if the river is too fast, deep or murky you may need to turn back and reconsider your plans. After 5 kilometers, you'll reach a grassy clearing which is the site of the old Mangamate hut. All that remains here is an old long drop which probably shouldn't be used. For the last 2 kilometers, the track follows up a small stream before gradually climbing the side of the hill. And finally you'll emerge onto a small clearing and be greeted by Mangamate hut. Mangamate Hut was likely built in the 1960s for wild animal control operations and was originally situated on a grassy clearing beside the Mangamate stream. In the early 2000s it was removed and rebuilt on the current site, 2 kilometers south, and today it sits high on the saddle with a great view down the valley. Unfortunately for me, I never got to see much of the view. Like the other huts in the Furunaki Forest Park, Mangamate Hut is well equipped with 9 bunks along the back wall, a small bench top, a table with chairs, a wood stove, drying lines, candle holders, shelves, a smoke alarm and roof skylights. It's essentially identical to other nine bunk huts in the forest park, like Upper Furunaki Hut. Outside there's seating and hooks under the veranda as well as a bench and sink connected to the roof filled water tanks. As always it's advised you filter or boil water before use. Around the hut there's a picnic table, a woodshed with tools and a nifty composting toilet, don't forget your toilet paper. There's also room for tents in the clearing out front, just in case the hut is full. I arrived around midday and had the hut to myself for the afternoon, so I made some lunch and got the fire going. It was cold and misty outside, and the weather certainly wasn't improving, so I warmed up by the fire and read some of the old tramping magazines left behind. You often come across books and magazines left at backcountry huts, and they can be a great way to pass the time. I loved reading the Auckland University Tramping Club's annual Footprints magazines as they had some hilarious stories from their many adventures and misadventures. By the evening a couple more trampers had arrived at the hut so we chatted for a while and prepared our dinners. I always really enjoy meeting new people out at the huts I visit, it's got to be one of the best parts of tramping around New Zealand. And as it got late and darkness slowly crept in, I climbed into my sleeping bag and went to bed for the night. Make sure you remember to bring earplugs, just in case of snoring. The morning was damp and gloomy with a few showers rolling by, but the forest was alive with birdsong. I enjoyed a morning coffee before packing up my gear and getting ready for the day. Remember to sign into the hut logbook, sweep the floors and leave the place clean and tidy before you set off. 
and with my rain jacket on, I got going on my way back to the car park. Due to the moderate difficulty of the track and the many river crossings, I recommend doing a multi-day tramp to reach Mangamate Hut so you'll have an easier time walking the track downstream. The two-night Mangamate loop would be ideal for most people, as you would experience the best of the forest park, staying a night at Central Furunaki Hut and then Mangamate Hut. Sometimes during the year the tracks can become overgrown, so you'll need to watch out for track markers, and try not to get stung by Onga Onga, a nasty native stinging nettle. Also watch out for fio or blue ducks along the rivers. For how rare they are, they're now relatively common within the forest park thanks to the ongoing conservation efforts through the Fio Forever Recovery Program. You'll come across stoat traps used to control the predators' populations and protect the fio as well as other native species. A couple of shorter day walks are also available from the River Road car park, such as a 3 hour return to the Arahaki Lagoon and a 1 hour return to the 14 metre Waiachu waterfall both offering more spectacular native forests and bird life. I also recommend a relaxing dip in the warm geothermal water of Kerosene Creek near Rotorua if you're passing by on your way home. Overall, I really enjoyed my 3 night 52km journey through the incredible Furunaki Forest Park and despite the weather, Mangamate Hut was a great place to stay on the final night. It's not the easiest hut to get to, but it is unique as it's the only one in the area that sits high above the valley floor with a great view on a good day. This also makes it more exposed to the weather, but unlike Upper Furunaki Hut, Mangamate Hut is insulated inside and in slightly better condition. I'd give Mangamate Hut 4 stars. After a somewhat difficult tramp in, it's a solid, warm and well equipped hut with a good view. It's a standard hut, so no bookings are required. Check out the dock website in the description below for more information on the tracks, prices and how to pay. There's no cell phone reception at the hut, but there is at the car park just in case you need to arrange transport. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of the huts of New Zealand. You're on the track there, buddy. Oh, you got it. Oh, he got his worm.